The topic is Brown versus Board of Education and the Civil Rights Movement, and we're talking to Dr. Revis Mitchell. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, as we uh, uh, promised before we had our, uh, ended our second segment, that we'd give you an opportunity to talk about that uh, critical period between 1954 and uh, the 1960s, with the beginning of the so-called civil rights movement, this period of massive resistance and except, talk about uh, right. some of the some of the uh, historical developments in that uh, well, particular period. I certainly want to set the stage, but in a conversation with my my son Roman, who's 12 years old as a student, Roman reminded me that we needed to point out about who Brown right. was. Mm -hmm. We referred to Brown, mm -hmm. Linda Brown, mm -hmm. and he reminded me that Linda Brown had to walk about two miles mm -hmm. to school every day. And her father became upset mm -hmm. because in Topeka, Kansas, where they lived, they walked past the school that white students could attend. Mm -hmm. And it's very poignant. Linda Brown is still out on the circuit. She's still lecturing. But she pointed out that she asked her father one day, why do we have to go past these schools? Why come I can't attend? Mm -hmm. and, her, and, the, and Mr. Brown, in, in statements and, and in written comments, he pointed out how bad he felt to tell his daughter mm -hmm. why she couldn't attend, uh, that he didn't believe she was inferior in any way, but the system. Mm -hmm. So that led Brown, who, had, who was a, a product of this post-period, mm -hmm. uh, post-war, to, to take resistance, to take mm -hmm. resistance. We'd see that in America. Mm -hmm. You know, the irony is that many of those young people who, 54 through 60, who are educated, mm -hmm. become the college students who, mm -hmm. in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. comes about. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at Birmingham later, and you look at Arkansas, you look at Little Rock, mm -hmm. these people have been exposed to the media. Mm -hmm. They've read of Brown. I think what's sometimes missed when looking at African American culture is there have been discussions in churches mm -hmm. and, and in clubs and in schools about what Brown meant. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it empowered the people. Mm -hmm. It empowered the people to, to follow nonviolent, passive resistance, mm -hmm. but to take a proactive stand. Mm -hmm. You know, what the civil rights movement really did with the use of the media, mm -hmm. it made the world and it made America look at how it was treating mm -hmm. its African American mm -hmm. counterparts. Mm -hmm. Uh, how dogs would be sicked upon people, how people would be forced to walk and couldn't ride buses. Mm -hmm. And all these people were asking for was a God-given right to the American dream. Dr. Mitchell, let me interrupt you because uh, in 1960, when you talked about uh, that incident yes. of uh, the dogs and et cetera, uh, being a student at a and n College in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, uh, a freshman student, see? never having taken a pen in hand before to write any kind of statement before in my life, All right. I wrote a little piece of information to the Arkansas Democrat. All right. The only thing it said was find example that we're showing to the rest of the world and sign my name. Exactly. And they published that. And it was from that inspiration alone that I became convinced that I had to tell the story of the African American. You see, I think that, and, and that has been replicated mm -hmm. in so many, so many instances. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee, you know, so much civil rights activities would take place mm -hmm. here with, with students working to desegregate the lunch counters. Mm -hmm. But Nashville's population, mm -hmm. Nashvillians, responded mm -hmm. to, to a quiet demand, not a violent mm -hmm. demand, but a quiet demand. But just what you said, mm -hmm. why are you treating me mm -hmm. this way? How come I can come in a store and purchase commodities, mm -hmm. purchase a suit, but I can't sit down and have a cola? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what have I done? Mm -hmm. What is my endemic inferiority? Mm -hmm. Or really said to America, why are you afraid mm -hmm. to enter into things with me equally? Mm -hmm. From the civil rights movement, we have fast progression to Brown even the present day. Mm -hmm. And so many institutions which African Americans hold dear, it appears are under attack. Mm -hmm. We never asked, we never demanded the creation of historically black colleges. Mm -hmm. Historically black colleges were set up in the period after the Civil War mm -hmm. for African Americans. But from those colleges, we learned the lessons of the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. We learned the lessons of Brown. Mm -hmm. And many times now, it seems that there's a, a forceful effort in America to dismantle mm -hmm. those colleges, those institutions, everywhere from Jackson State in Mississippi to what some see as an attack on Tennessee mm -hmm. State here in Nashville, in Nashville, Tennessee. You know, why suddenly is it wrong to have a place for people who have been denied to understand that, to understand the history, and to tell their story mm -hmm. to the world? Mm -hmm. I think the other point about segregation people need to realize is African Americans have never segregated. Mm -hmm. There have never been a time mm -hmm. when persons of all races and creeds there's never been a time when white Americans were not welcomed at Fisk or Tennessee State mm -hmm. or any black institution. 
There's never been a time when whites in America may have entered a black business establishment and they were forced to take a seat in the rear. There's never been a time with a black taxi service that it wouldn't support and move mm -hmm. white Americans. When is the rest of America going to take the lesson mm -hmm. of African Americans from Brown mm -hmm. through support of national causes mm -hmm. and bring it to fruition? Mm -hmm. And, and, and as, as the poet once said, when is America going to find to be America for mm -hmm. me? Very good. And you know, Dr. Mitchell, uh, one of the things is we've got about five minutes here, and let, let's see if we can uh, introduce this as, as, as uh, an area of discussion. Yeah. One of the things that uh, people often talk about is the, uh, that the Brown decision uh, also demanded additional resources from the government, which is to say the government uh, was told that it could no longer divide its resources the right. way it was. Speak to uh, some of the, the Well, you know, of that. The, the whole concept of separate but equal, things were never equal. So if things weren't equal to begin with, to, to raise me to a level, you've got to put more into my community. Mm -hmm. You've got to put more into me. Post-Brown, though, what we were saying was poorly educated African Americans mm -hmm cost the American system. Mm -hmm. Poorly educated persons are more likely mm -hmm. to end up on welfare, mm -hmm. are more likely to end up without employment. Mm -hmm. So we were arguing that with equal access to education and equal access to mm -hmm. opportunity, mm -hmm. because that's what Brown was really looking at, mm -hmm. equal access to mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And in America, I think I'm repeating myself, but in America, a first class education was the first opportunity. Mm -hmm. 1649 mm -hmm. in New England, first public school act. Mm -hmm. People believing that to be an inform to be a well-trained and informed citizen mm -hmm. to be educated, so this had been denied. What we really wanted was equality with mm -hmm. education, a and that equality of education led to an equality in American mm -hmm. life, an equality with the American dream. Mm -hmm. Post Brown, we, we continually battled back and forth mm -hmm. regarding voting rights and accessibility, mm -hmm. or support for inner-city communities, or support for higher education. But Dr. Haney, it all stems back to Brown. Mm -hmm. The first, that decision saying you, that it's un-American to have things separate but equal, mm -hmm. I think challenges the status quo in America. Doc, Dr. Mitchell, during the last three minutes that we have, let me have you to uh, speak uh, specifically to uh, young people today who might not uh, be uh, focused or involved and even understand. Uh, what would you tell them uh, in terms of their responsibility? Or do they have a responsibility to uh, continue uh, the expansion of uh, what Brown uh, represented. Yes, they do. Uh, it's a shame in America to have to have forced laws mm -hmm. to support people who don't go to school. Mm -hmm. Truancy is not a luxury that especially a minority community can afford. Mm -hmm. uh, the next great message from Brown and the great American message is we all must vote. Mm -hmm. America must become a nation where people are fully participating. It's not enough to have 33% of the population vote in national elections. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to have only 24% of the African-American population vote. Mm -hmm. The promise of Brown, the struggles, uh, and, and as we move in this century to an international arena and international discussions of economics and others, Americans, all Americans, must vote. Mm -hmm. uh, they, must be, they must be well educated. Mm -hmm. They must be able to support themselves and literacy, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, we, we don't have the luxury of illiteracy anymore in the mm -hmm. world. So that's the great lesson of Brown. Mm -hmm. African Americans took a very little and made quite a bit mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Now the legacy is to take that, to take that participation mm -hmm. and reach the fullest potential. Mm -hmm. You know, go to high school, go to college, mm -hmm. graduate, mm -hmm. look at a profession, mm -hmm. become involved in community. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be about. And you would encourage them as, uh, uh, of some of the final statements dealing with uh, Brown and civil rights to uh, participate in the upcoming uh, presidential election, presidential election. elections, and state elections, and, and and in America, in this point in time, a high school education is not enough. Mm -hmm. A high school education equivalents out to about what our grandparents. Mm -hmm. Every person in the sound of my voice needs to consider a college education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the dream of America. There are funds out there. There are possibilities out there, mm -hmm. and they must also keep themselves informed by continuing to support and view programs like comments mm -hmm. because the salient discussions that come about from this stage mm -hmm. are ones that can be carried over into the family room, mm -hmm. the classroom, the church room. And that's what made Brown work when people talked about what had happened, mm -hmm. when they entered into it, when they were fully participating Americans mm -hmm. and fully participating citizens. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mitchell, let me uh, <coughs> thank you over the last 30 seconds we have for that uh, excellent information. Uh, I think that uh, this is, as we indicated earlier, this is the fourth 
of uh, a five series uh, part that, of, of, of shows that we're dealing with uh, Brown versus the Board of Education. Of course, this is Brown, Segregation, and Civil Rights. And uh, we've got uh, one final show to uh, deal with, and that is uh, Brown and Historical Black Colleges. Well, thank and you we for certainly the appreciate you. Thank and, you for and the of invitation. course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Cummings. Thank you, and good morning. that we talk about it.